Chavez, Cortez and Flores, City Manager O'Kelly and colleagues. On behalf of my fellow Citizens Climate Lobby volunteers, especially those who live in and near Congressional District 40, which includes Bell Gardens, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on behalf of your resolution 2021-20. My name is Ken Bodger. I live in Whittier and I'm a retired businessman and an online academic tutor. As an educator, I work with young people. This is one of several reasons I'm so concerned about the climate crisis and why since 2014, I have been a Citizens Climate Lobby volunteer. Next slide, please. Citizens Climate Lobby is an international volunteer nonpartisan group, which in the US lobbies Congress to price carbon and return all funds raised to American families. We were founded in 2007 in San Diego. We have over 466 chapters in the United States. There are, we have more than 170,000 supporters on our network. Our local chapter works in Congressional District 38, 39, and in District 40, Congresswoman Lucille Royval Allard, which of course includes Bell Gardens. And uh, this picture here on the slide is uh, uh, some of our volunteers uh, meeting with Congresswoman Royval Allard um, at her commerce offices a, a year or two ago. <clears throat> Next slide, please. We're all Southern Californians and no one really needs to tell us about climate change. Our economy depends on water, but we're in for another dry year. Scientists say that one third to one half of the severity of the 2014 mega drought was due to climate change. Many Bell Gardens residents, your constituents, work in jobs that require that they work outdoors, exposed to the elements. What will higher temperatures and worsening heat waves do to them and their kids? Higher temperatures make smog worse. A warming climate will reduce agricultural productivity, raising the cost of food. And taxes will need to go up to pay for infrastructure improvements and repairs. A warming climate will extend the range of insect vectors, making serious infectious disease problems in tropical regions worse and bringing some of those vectors uh, into North America. Just like COVID, it's working families who suffer the most, even though they are least responsible for the climate crisis. Next slide, please. Based on the best scientific evidence available to date, by 2030, CO2 emissions should already be on a significant downward path if we are to effectively fight climate change. So we have less than 10 years to mobilize a complete conversion from fossil fuels to green energy, or we risk dangerously destabilizing Earth's climate. Bottom line, we need to get carbon emissions under control and soon. Next slide, please. Because of the urgency of the climate crisis, Citizens Climate Lobby worked with Florida Democratic Congressman Ted Deutsch to introduce the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act into the House of Representatives in January 2019. This is the bill that is the subject of Resolution 2021-20. The act puts a fee on fossil fuels, which is levied near the source of those fuels. The well, in the case of oil or natural gas, mine head if it's coal, or port of entry if the fuel is imported. The fuel starts at $15 per carbon ton equivalent and rises $10 per year adjusted for inflation. All funds raised, net of administrative expenses, are returned to American families on an equal per capita basis via a monthly dividend. Imported goods are subject to the same carbon fee at the border and the fees collected are used to help American businesses and workers who export to countries with lower carbon fees than ours. There will be a narrow regulatory pause for 10 years, only on federal regulations that are directed at CO2 emissions and nothing else. This avoids doubling up on penalties, provides predictability for business so they can plan, and gives the policy a chance to work. If the bill's targets aren't met, the legislation requires those regulations to return 100%. There are additional safeguards in the act. If the reductions of greenhouse gas emissions specified by law are not met, then the rate of increase of the fee goes up from $10 a year increase to 15. That's a 50% increase. 
also, if after 10 years, reductions in emissions under the law are not enough, then the EPA is directed to step back in and impose additional regulations in, in addition to the carbon fee to push emissions down. Finally, 10 years after enactment of the law, the National Academy of Sciences is required to do a study of emission trends to make and make a forecast for the future. Bottom line, this is a detailed and serious policy to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions that cause climate change. We feel it is the basis of effective climate policy. It is not necessarily the only climate policy, but it is the most basic. Next slide, please. This policy will reduce America's emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, by at least 40% in the first 12 years. It is supported by economists and scientists as simple, comprehensive, and effective. The CO2 reduction targets in the Energy Innovation Act are in line with what the IPCC of the United Nations says is necessary to limit global warming to between 1.5 and 2 degrees Celsius, which is the target range that's being discussed. In addition, real-world experience with a similar system in British Columbia, Canada, shows that this approach works. Next slide, please. As I mentioned earlier, the Energy Innovation Act returns 100% of net funds raised to American families on an equal per capita basis with half shares for children under 19. Since the fee is rising, the dividend rises too. It starts small at about $760 a year for a family of four, that's roughly $64 a month. But after 10 years, our projections are that it will be about $4,400 a year. That's three, roughly $370 a month for a family of four. It is entirely up to your constituents how they spend this money. But here are some possibilities. In the early years of the policy, some people may use it to offset higher fuel or electric costs. For example, if uh, you or your neighbor is stuck with a gas guzzler, then this would help you uh, pay the increased fuel costs until you could trade it in on an electric car or truck. In later years of the policy, for example, let's say your truck is ready to be, be uh, you're, you're ready to trade in your car or truck. Uh, in later years of the policy or higher in, in income individuals early on could make different choices. For example, people could use the funds to buy an electric car or truck, insulate their houses better, buy solar panels, change from gas to electric stoves or hot water heaters, etc. And the beauty of this is that once people go renewable or even more renewable, they will be buying fewer fossil fuels and so paying fewer carbon fees. But the dividend to these people, to the, to the people who are supporting renewable energy does not diminish. Therefore, they're keeping more of the money in their pocket. This means that this policy is a progressive and socially just way to reward individuals for going green. But it's also small government since people get to decide what to do with the funds themselves. We've seen with the COVID relief checks that this approach is simple and can work. In addition, it will give everyone a stake in fighting climate change and give the bill staying power so it's less likely to be challenged if control of the White House and Congress changes in the future. Next slide, please. Citizens Climate Lobby commissioned a study to look at the impacts of the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act on American families both as a whole and according to income levels, income levels, age, and ethnicity. The study was done at the national, state, and congressional district level. Here are some selected results. Nationwide, 85% of families would either receive more in dividends than they would pay in extra costs of goods and services due to the carbon fee, or they would come out even. In Congressional District 40, this figure is quite a bit higher. 97% of families would come out ahead or even. In other words, they would receive more in the dividend. This is according to a professional economic study. They would receive more in the dividend than they pay in the additional costs of goods and services uh, due to the fees. Next slide, please.
for the lowest 40% of families ranked by consumption of all the goods and services that we use in our daily lives, which is a proxy for our incomes. 85% of families nationwide and 100% of families in this congressional district, District 40, would come out ahead or even. The 100% is not a tight one. And if we think about it, it sort of makes sense. Because our carbon footprints are closely tied to our incomes. For example, let's, co let's compare two families of four going on vacation. There's a regular working family, and then there's someone with a bunch of bucks somewhere. Okay, the regular working family going, or middle class family, whatever, going on a vacation, packs the kids in the car, maybe goes up to Oregon or something like that, um, maybe stays home. Okay, what does the rich family do? Number one, they've got a bigger car. They've got a bigger house, more carbon emissions right there. They fly someplace, probably maybe even fly tourist class. And as you can just see in this comparison of the same activity, the, our income relates to our carbon footprints. And because of that, an equal dividend becomes quite progressive. So. Anyhow, as I've said several times now, this is a progressive policy that helps working families make the transition to the clean to a clean economy. Next slide, please. As the dividends are spent, this acts as a stimulus to the economy, creating jobs. Green energy and energy savings investments will increase. And we project that this will lead to 2.1 million additional jobs over whatever else the economy would create over 10 years in local communities. Next slide, please. Electric cars pr produce pollute less than gas ones, and solar and wind energy pollute much less than coal fired power plants. So we project that 295,000 lives will be saved through 2030 if the act is, in, in, is enacted essentially immediately because of better air quality, as opposed to 114,000 lives lost today. Again, although the focus of this bill is climate change, its health, economic, and social benefits are profound. Next slide, please. Because of this, prominent progressives and conservatives support the Energy Innovation Act itself or the carbon fee and dividend approach that it embodies. Uh, here on this slide, at the left is tre now Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, a very well-known economist saying, I am fully supportive of effective carbon pricing, and I know the president is as well. That's President Biden. On the right, of course, well-known uh, Republican senator. I am very open to uh, Mitt Romney, excuse me. I am very open to a carbon tax, carbon dividend, where there's a tax on oil companies and coal companies, and the funds that are raised go to individual taxpayers so they can meet the cost of higher price of energy. Essentially the same sort of thing we're saying. In the House of Representatives at the end of 2020, the Energy Innovation Act had 27 California co-sponsors, including Congress members Lucille Roybal Allard, Linda Sanchez, Judy Chu, Grace Napolitano, Pete Aguilar, Lou Correa, Norma Torres, Adam Schiff, and others. Nationwide, 86 Congress members have co-sponsored the act. We hope it will be co-sponsored by a similar number of representatives when it is reintroduced this year. Faith groups as diverse as the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, the Evangelical Environmental Network, Young Evangelicals for Climate Action, the Congregationalists, Unitarians, and Friends have endorsed or support, has endorsed this bill or support the approach we favor. The Los Angeles County Democratic Party has endorsed. Finally, the United States Chamber of Commerce and the American Petroleum Institute have both stated they are open to a carbon price. One reason that business groups are more open to carbon pricing now is the European Union's carbon border adjustment, the same concept I mentioned a few slides back, uh, which takes effect in 2023. If the U.S. does not implement an equivalent carbon fee, our exporters and the workers they employ will soon be penalized when they try to export to this enormous market. Although it's not the main reason to pass the Energy Innovation Act, Simple economic self-interest is an important one.
is still an important reason. Next slide, please. Passing resolution 2021-20 will make the city of Bell Gardens a municipal endorser of the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. If you do this, you'll be in good company. On this slide here on the on the uh, on the show uh, is a listing, a partial listing of municipal sponsors. The act has been endorsed by over 100 counties and cities worldwide, uh, nationwide. Excuse me. Uh, here on the list here of uh, the County of Los Angeles, the largest local government body in the nation, has endorsed. And I, in my slide here, I put unanimous because there is a Republican on the board of supervisors, and she joined with her four Democratic colleagues. Uh, local cities, Pomona, Redlands, Brea, Santa Ana down further in Orange County, Irvine, the Bay Area, uh, and then recognizable cities across the country, Miami, Cincinnati, Rochester, et cetera, et cetera. In, in our view, if your city will honor us or honor the act really uh, with your endorsement, we feel that you will be making an important contribution to passing this act, uh, important climate legislation this year, thus protecting planet Earth so that your constituents, especially the younger ones, will have a better chance at living their lives in a stable world, not one wrapped by continuous Time to get cut off. You have five or ten minutes. Whatever you're cut probably, off. probably.